from our one aspect that is green is green uh, is green technologies. That's the first one. The second one that I want or concepts that I want us to look at it is the concept of ministry, uh, and then finally the concept of paradigm shift. What does those concepts or concepts mean to us as we begin the ministry? of the word of God. Firstly, green technologies, let's start there. It's a technical term by itself. The, 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 the word green before the technology, it's an acronym, an acronym which represents certain words in it that before or as we minister, I want us just to break it down so that we follow each other as we minister the word. The word green, it's an acronym firstly for the word genetics. Genetics or, or in other words, or in simple words, it means genes, genetics or genes as it relates to human beings. The second word in green, it is the word R, which means robotics or machines. The third word is information, which relates to technology. And the fourth word is nano or, or nanotechnology, which refers to science. For an example, nano might also mean, you'll often remember sometimes they use nano SIM cards. Nano refers to size. So if something which is of great magnitude has been compressed to become smaller, it's referred to as nano. Uh, so therefore, that's, that's the concept of green uh, technologies, genetics, which means genes, robotics, which means machines, information, which refers to technology, nano, which refers to size. So the concept in essence of green technology is the creation of machines in the similitude of human beings, the creation of machines in the similitude of uh, machines. And the concept of green technology, before we go to scriptures, I want us to please pass here, Bangale. we'll read scriptures in, in a moment. But the concept of green technologies uh, anchors itself in the concept or the word which you can often be referred to transhumanism. This concept is a belief in the science world or a theory that believes that the human race can be evolved beyond its current physical and mental limitations, especially by means of science and technology. So in essence, what green technology intends to achieve is that it, it emanates uh, it emanates from the concept of the creation of computers, computers and a technology which in our day has evolved into the robotics or robots, which will have the same genes as human beings. I think that's the critical part that I want us to just catch there as we, as we continue. So green technology is, it's, it's in essence, it's the creation which started from the creation of computers and the technology, but has evolved in our day to then come to the concept that refers to robots or, 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 or robotics in the similitude. So those robots are, are in the image of human beings. The, the target with, uh, with green technology is, is a, it's to prove if the limitations that man naturally has cannot be broken through sciences and technology. So that's what green technology does. There will be a replica through the, or the taking of genes of human beings being replicated into machines so that the machines can do the same things that human beings can generally uh, are able uh, to do as a way of breaking boundaries and limitations that human beings uh, will, will generally um, uh, be, be having. So in, in green technology, the aim at the end of the day it's that the human beings and mach machines must be so intimately entangled to, to a state that after that entanglement of machines and human beings, there must not be a difference between human beings and also machines. That's what green technology is uh, it's all about. They must be one. That's why in green, there's also genes. Genes, you'll, you'll remember when a child is born, uh, they'll often say that the genes he took from his father's genes it took from his mother's genes the stronger genes belongs to this family so the same thing with machines they are meant to take the genes the genetics of human beings and then implant it into into uh, machines so that's the concept and though that concept intends to advance or break limitations that human beings have there are dangers that i want us uh, to just uh, give attention uh, uh, to as we start this this topic and one of the dangers in green technology or, or the creation of robotics in in simulating what human beings can do the the first one is is that as human or, or as machines do what human beings can do they will come to a stage where they take over decisions that normally could have been taken by human beings and even the decisions that will be made will come to a place where they will be they will, where they will be so complex that only machines can be able to make those decisions because of their complexity. 
and and therefore it creates then a heavy reliance on machines more than human uh, beings. And the end game, therefore, of green technology is to produce beings that will be immortal. So the machines that will be created, they will be immortal in a sense that they, you won't be able to distract them. <laughs> they will be able to live even perhaps longer than human beings. And the concept of immortality or life is a concept which God alone has authority um, with it. So that by itself, where, where we humans then start engaging to those levels, if someone else might say that we have then started to play God. There was another concept I wanted to explain, but because of time, I'll pass there. It's the concept of artificial intelligence and also intelligence amplifier, which is AI and IA. But because of time, I'll maybe just pass there. The second concept in breaking this uh, topic or theme today that we're speaking to is the, the concept or, or the theme of ministry. The word ministry, in essence, is that the Christ who arose to go to heaven gave various ministries and gifts to the church, that each of them exists for the strengthening and is essential for the operation of the church. So the word ministry is when the giftings that Christ has bestowed upon the church works in harmony with each other for, for one purpose or the achieving of one goal. That's the second concept. The third concept that I want us to look at in and breaking this uh, theme or topic is the concept of a paradigm shift. The word paradigm shift means a fundamental change in approach or underlying assumptions. <laughs> let's, let's therefore just remind each other the theme that we are speaking to after these various concepts that we, we have then explained this evening. It's the necessity of church paradigm shift for ministry relevance in an era of, of, uh, of green technologies. We've explained those three concepts, which is the green technologies. We've explained the concept of ministry. And we have finally now just explained what a paradigm shift means. So in summary of that, what that means is that in an era of technology, what, what is the shift? What is the shift or, or the change in approach that the church must have in their ministry in this time as it relates to the time of technology. You'll remember that there is a scripture that says of the sons of Issachar, there were men who understood their times and also what Israel ought to do. So the topic suggests that as a church, we must be sensitive to the times that we live in, be sensitive to the technological advancements which have been perpetuated in the secular world and therefore position ourselves as a church from a position that says with what is happening in our environment, how do we then position ourselves to be relevant in ministry? And let's therefore get into a biblical view to the topic that we are addressing today. I'll ask that we open together our Bible, especially to the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse 27. I have the amplified version, which I'll be reading from this evening. I'll, I'll invite you, please, at, at home, that we follow each other and we read together the uh, scriptures that we, we stayed connected to what the scriptures will also be saying. Genesis chapter number 1, verse 27 and verse 28 as it relates to the topic that we are studying today. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it reads as follows. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him male and female. He created them, he created them. And God blessed them, granting them certain authority and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subjugate it, putting it under your power and rule over it. The fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. The second scripture that I'll ask that we please read, it's the, the book of uh, uh, Acts chapter number one, verse three. Acts chapter number one, verse three. There'll be four passages that we'll be reading uh, this evening. Just stay with me as we read these passages. Acts chapter number one, verse three, reads as follows. To these men, he also showed himself alive after his suffering in Gethsemane and on the cross by a series of many infallible proofs and unquestionable demonstration appearing to them over a period of 40 days and, and talking to them about the things concerning the kingdom of God. Let's go to the second uh, passage, which will be the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 3, verse 9 and verse 10. Just, just write the scriptures as we read them. You might just need to refer to them even post the session today. Ephesians 3, uh, verse number 9 until verse 10. It says, And to make plain to everyone the plan of the mystery regarding, regarding the uniting of believing Jews. 
I like it in in what uh, am I because I'm, I'm now live for the phone that I would normally read from, but let me just read it in Amplified still. It says, and to make plain to everyone the plan of the mystery regarding the uniting of believe, believing Jews and Gentiles into one body, which is now was kept hidden through the ages in the mind of God who created all things. So now through the church, multifaceted wisdom of God in all countless aspects might now be made known and uh, revealing the mystery to the angelic rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. I know we've read just a few verses, but let's read just this last passage. Uh, and then we start with the ministry of the word, which is Psalms chapter number 24. Psalms chapter number 24, we'll read from verse one. Please on your side, I'll ask that you, you write them down and you please follow me as I read the scriptures. Psalms 24, we'll read verse one, uh, verse 1, verse 7 until 10. It reads as follows. It says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it, the world and those who dwell in it. Verse 7. It says, Lift up your heads, you gates, and be lifted up, ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in, who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is then this King of glory, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory who rules over all creation with his heavenly armies. Hallelujah. The, 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 the scriptures that we have read might look to maybe someone who's just listened to, to think that they are irrelevant, but stay stay the course. We'll connect them as, as we go. In, in us reading the Bible, as we have just read the scriptures that we read, there are certain laws that we must abide by in order to understand the scriptures. The, one of the first law that we understand scriptures through is the law or the concept called the law of first mention. What the law of first mention says is that in order to understand the purpose or the purpose or the aim of a thing, you must firstly study where that particular thing is firstly mentioned. That place of first mention becomes the basis on which the, the revelation or the purpose of the thing then is built upon that thing. By, 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 by human beings, we have read in the book of Genesis that when God created man, there was a particular a purpose. By design, therefore, and by this law of first mention, we know that when God designed man, he designed man to be in the perfect, in his perfect image and also to be in his likeness. Hey, my God. And the challenge, therefore, with this green technology of creating robotics to be like human beings is that a, a similitude of man or, or human beings will be created not in the image of God, but will be created in the image of human beings. That we know that human beings by nature has limitations. Human beings by nature carries a sinful nature. Human beings by nature are evil. They all need God in order to be saved. So the challenge with creating robotics in the similitude of man is that these genes that are used, similitude and uh, taken from man, might be created then to stand to stand um, in, 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 in the image of human beings. So that defeats the purpose that God created about human beings when he created human beings at first. And the robots will not be in a position to receive salvation. Because we know that the Bible says that all men have sinned and has fallen short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And that is why, therefore, all men requires salvation so that we can be made right with God. Another limitation that the robotics will have is that afterwards, after God had created man, we know according to the book of Genesis, the Bible says that God blessed them, granting them authority and granted them authority and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And something which, which relates, of course, robots might be given authorities in disciplines as it relates to those that will be given. But in terms of multiplication as ordained by God, there might be limitations to that. So with regards to the creation of man and the purpose that God created man for, the robotics will have limitations. <laughs> and when we also read, according to the book of Psalms 24, it says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it and everything which is created on earth must be aligned to the master who is who is, uh, who is is God. Hallelujah. So if the church then therefore, because there is, there is a purpose, you know, sometimes, sometimes when technology uh, attempts to advance uh, a progress and break human limitations. There is also a Luciferian spirit 
which can take over the good intentions of man. Oh, hallelujah. The Luciferian spirit can take over the good intentions of man and perpetuate man's intentions to infiltrate evil in man's intentions. That's why in one of the prophecies, this was not part of the teaching, but let me pass it. In one of the prophecies of Daniel in the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, when he saw the image of King Nebuchadnezzar, one of the revelations that Daniel had was that the shoe of, of, of King Nebuchadnezzar, it would have clay on it and another part would have steel on it. Mm. Clay reflecting the soil or the mud that human beings were made from and also still reflecting the robotics or the machines that would take over mm, in, in a Babylonian system or a system controlled from a world order. Because a Babylonian system is a system that deflects or reflects a world order of doing things. It's like an Egyptian system. It reflects the, the, the world order of, of doing things. So when, when Daniel interprets the dream of the shoes of the clay and also and also the steel, he shows a time which is coming where robotics will be in existence at the same time as human beings. It also reminds me of the concept of Netherlands, where, where, where in the time where, where, where the angels visited Sodom and the, the angels came, they say that there were, there were beings at the time that wanted to have that wanted to have intercourse with the angels, that the men of God uh, came and said, rather I give you my daughters. And we see the emergence of, of, of the tribe called Nephilim, that God says there was evil in those men. There was nothing good found out of those men because they were made out of extraordinary encounters, the same concept as machines. And that's why God ended up wiping the entire uh, human race and then all, only uh, uh, kept Noah and started a generation from Noah. So the, the emergence of the robotics represents a challenge or, or will, will come to a point where there is challenges which comes that will challenge the world today. But what, what is then the paradigm shift? In what way can the church be relevant in the times of the robotics, in the times where improvements are tried to be brought forward, the improvements which might bring challenges in our day? What paradigm shifts must we then uh, 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 be, be introduced as a way of being relevant as a church? The paradigm shift that, that the church must then go into is, is that of a fundamental change in the way that we do things as a church. That paradigm shift is us going to basics as the church. Oh, hallelujah, help us, God. It's us going back to basics as a church. The basics means that the concept of the church is a concept started by Jesus. Therefore, every focus that the church has must be the focus that Christ had. So that means that whatever Jesus was passionate about, so the church must be passionate about those things. Whatever was the focus of Jesus, so, so also the church must be focused on those things. Whatever drove Jesus Christ must also be driving the church. When you read, according to the book of Acts chapter number 1 verse 3, it says that after Jesus Christ had risen from the dead for 40 days, he, he appeared to the disciples, displaying to them many infallible signs and demonstrating unquestionable demonstration to that he's alive. The Bible also further states that within those 40 days, the focus of Jesus Christ at the time was to teach his disciples about the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. The, Jesus knew that after the 40 days, he would not be physically present with the disciples. And the concept that Jesus focuses on within those 40 days, the Bible says that he focused on the kingdom of God. Hey, hallelujah. Which means that when Christ had resurrected from the dead, he did not necessarily then establish them into, into religion, but he established them into the kingdom. Hey, hallelujah. I wish I had time to break down the kingdom, what the kingdom or the concept of the kingdom is. But because of limitations of time, we're going to pass through that concept and just lay the foundation of the kingdom of God versus religion. The reason why Christ then did not necessarily focus on, on teaching them or immersing them in religious concept is because religion by itself has limitations. One of the limitations that religion has is that what the concept of religion or the, the, the limitations of religion is that religion focuses itself on the four corners of the church. Oh, hallelujah. Religion by limitation or design as it is man-made as a way of worshiping God. The, that concept, it focuses itself 
of operation within the four corners of the four walls called the church. Oh, hallelujah. The second limitation of religion is that the influence of religion or, or, or religion, its influence is limited to the walls of the church. The influence of religion only relates to the church. The influence of religion does not go outside, outside of the four walls, but it limits its influence and operation within the church. By so saying, and in also establishing this concept of, of the kingdom of God, there, there are spheres, my God, there are spheres or what would openly be referred to, to mountains of influence, that if the church is to have a paradigm shift, we are to leave the concept of religion, the concept that limits our influence to the four corners. And we must extend our, our influence outside even of the church. There, is, there are seven mountains, there are seven spheres of influence that the church will need to be intentional. Oh, hallelujah. That the church will need to be intentional in crafting, in teaching, in developing the church through the various ministries, oh hallelujah, that through these years, through these mountains, we must be established through the first mountain of influence that the church in its having a paradigm shift that it must go into is the mountain of religion, hallelujah. I've already said that our limitation must not only be in religion, but it must be beyond religion. But our starting point is through the mountain of of religion. What well, the mountain of religion, it is the place where pastors, a place where prophets, a place where apostles, a place where teachers, a place where the different ministries, the spiritual and administrative ministries operate within the concept of the church. Hey, oh, hallelujah. The sphere or mountain of influence, we must be effective at it. We must not do church for the sake of doing church. But it must be meticulous in a way that Paul in the book of Ephesians, he says that, and God has bestowed unto the church so that the manifold wisdoms of God can be displayed out to the world. Oh, hallelujah. So the mountain of religion becomes a platform where destinies and ministries are being crafted and where believers are prepared for both the temple and also the secular. Hallelujah. So the church or the, 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 the mountain of religion need to focus itself not only crafting or preparing the spiritual ministries, but it must prepare even the secular ministry. The second mountain or, or the sphere of influence that the church must focus on if it is to have a paradigm shift, it is, it is the mountain of family. We cannot do church effectively and be failures in our own families. Oh, hallelujah. When every man is just before God, he's just on how effective he is with his family. Even before a man is chosen into a role of leadership, the Bible says that let us check his effectiveness right from home. So the second sphere or the second mountain that we must focus on in preparing believers for us to have a paradigm shift is for us to focus on the mountain of family. Oh, hallelujah. Every life begins with a family. Whether a person becomes a criminal, whether a person becomes a doctor, whether a person ends up anywhere, a person starts with a family. So a family has a way of influencing a person's destiny. So in order for us uh, to have a paradigm shift as a church, in order for us to be relevant in our day, we must be effective family people. We must take care of our families. The third mountain, it is the mountain of education. Oh, hallelujah. The mountain of education, it is a critical one. Hallelujah. Because whoever gets to be sent to Egypt is one who understands, hey, hallelujah, and know the language of Egypt. We don't send anyone to Egypt who doesn't speak their language. We don't send anyone to Egypt who does not speak their language and understand their language. So education within the church concept, oh my God, prepares the church for ministry in the secular world. Education prepares the church to have a voice in the secular world. It prepares the church to have its own voice because in the boardrooms of business, we don't necessarily speak a language of tongues, but we must speak, we must speak the language of Egypt. There is a purpose why God, when after Moses, 
for him to go and rescue the Israelites in Egypt. Because the Bible says that, and Moses was learned in all the Egyptian wisdoms and knowledge. He was vested in all knowledge of, of, of wisdom as it relates to Egypt. So if you are to have a paradigm shift, we must encourage our people to get education. Oh, hallelujah. The, the mountain of education, it is a mountain which is critical for us to have a paradigm shift. The fourth mountain, it is a mountain of politics and government governance or government. The mountain of politics and governance. What the word politics, politics only refers to the way of life. And there is no one who can claim not to be involved in politics. Oh, hallelujah. So this mountain of politics and government, it is a place where laws and regulations are formulated to control how our day-to-day -day lives operate. One of the examples of men of God who operated within the area of politics and governance, it is, it is a man called Daniel. As a child of God, Daniel was a governor in Babylon. And through Daniel, been in government in Babylon. We see, we see the, the children of Israel being preserved. We see a godly influence perpetuating and influencing the way governments in Babylon operated because of a man uh, called Daniel who majored in politics and also governance. The fifth mountain, it is the, the mountain of media and technology. Oh, hallelujah. The, the, we must stop as a church that any concept that we don't understand that we are tech, Rather, we must take a pause and study those concepts as a way of us advancing in knowledge and understanding those concepts without demonizing those things and not participating in those things. So the mountain of media and technology, it is, it is how lives are being influenced in our day. Uh, the children become influenced by what they watch on TV in our day. So, so you, you also learn that when the man of God by the name of Paul Crouch, when he started TBN, it was a mandate that God had given him because God wanted to perpetuate media and technology. Oh, hallelujah. And even other platforms such as Daystar and all of them, God has always been interested in infiltrating, infiltrating all forms of areas where there is influence. And this also should include the medias of our day. Oh, hallelujah. The medias of our day in us gaining dominion as a church, we must then take over the medias of our day in us uh, 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 dominating uh, through the message of Jesus Christ. The sixth mountain, it is the mountain of art and entertainment. Oh, hallelujah. You don't have to become a Sangoma for you to dominate in media and also in art and, and entertainment. We are seeing in our day a lot of people who have influence in art and entertainment bowing to foreign altars oh hallelujah because they want to they want dominion in those areas oh my god god help us in our day that we can have men and women who will take over the sphere or the mountain of arts and entertainment as a way of dominating for the kingdom of god the seventh and the last mountain of of influence it is the mountain of business and finance oh hallelujah God is interested in our day in empowering men and women in the kingdom of God towards business and also finance. According to the book of Isaiah chapter number 45 verse 3, when God speaks to Cyrus, a man who was a heathen and not saved, God says to, to Cyrus, he says, Cyrus, I will give you treasures hidden in the secret places. Hey, so God is a God who can empower men even to gain wealth and material things. So that the kingdom of God is not in need as it relates to finances, as it relates to influence in the business areas. God in our day, someone catch this, God in our day wants to take over cities hey, through his sons and daughters who operate in the secular world. Because there they, they are principles and laws that governs the mountain of business and finance that God through his male and female servants, he wants to perpetuate this mountain of business and finance through the saints. Hallelujah. So God in this mountain, he not only wants to take over cities, but he wants to take over nations. He wants to take over governments. He wants to dominate, oh hallelujah, the earth. In closing, when, 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 when David in the book of Psalms 24, 24 verse 1, he opens, he says, he says, the earth is the laws and everything in it. God has founded 
upon the foundations of the seas. Everything, every living creature on earth that we see, it belongs to God. Hey, hallelujah. In verse 7, when he changes, it's as if he has changed the concept, but he's still on the same theme after having said to us that the earth belongs to God. In verse 7, he says, he says, open up your gates. In verse 27, if I can read it again, he says, lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, Asian doors, and that the king of glory may come in. In order for us to take over cities, nations, and governments unto God, there is something in the spirit realm called the gates. Oh, hallelujah. There, is, there are gates in the spirit realm that in us taking over cities, in us taking over nations, we must master the concept of gates. Because when the book of Psalms, verse 27 says, he says, lift up your heads, you gates, and let the king of glory come in. So there's ways of dominating at the gates. There are ways of taking over from the gates because to every city, there are gates. To every, to every nation, there are gates. And what gates represent, it's systems of control. Oh my God, hallelujah. What gates represent, it represents concepts or principles or laws or spiritual fortifications that gates, oh my God, that cities are controlled through. So every city is controlled at the gates. So in us as believers, for us to have a paradigm shift, we must have come to, to understanding of, 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 of these seven mountains. So that in every mountain, the church not only religiously meet on Sundays, but it prepares generals who can take over every mountain. The mountain of religion, the mountain of family, the mountain of education, the mountain of arts and, and, arts and, and, and entertainment, the, uh, the mountain of media, the mountain of media, and also technology, the mountain of finance and business, the mountain of politics. So as a church, in us, in a time when the world is advancing in green technology to take over the mandate and the authority given over to men, we must be meticulous in preparing the church within the kingdom of God, advancing the, the influence of, of a godly government in all fears of government because of time and the time that you've reached. I'll just end here. May the good Lord bless you. And also other speakers will be speaking. We are so excited for what the Lord will be doing, for what the Lord will be building us through. May the good Lord indeed bless you this week. As a church, we go into a paradigm shift as we give to our beloved MC Mfueti to take over and do the ministration. May the good Lord bless you, saints. Amen. Amen. Uh, over, over to you, MC. God bless you. How about we break into a Thanksgiving prayer while the MC is coming close by? Just to cut the silence, let's put this time into good use. The MC will be joining us. Um, he seems to be off the grid. Shall we please? The Lord has spoken to us in many different ways and we're impacted differently here based on how the Lord spoke to us with such a great ministration of the word. Solid food indeed for the matured is what you've just been fed on. We can only really uh, take those nuggets that the Lord has just downloaded unto us and wising us up and uh, really empowering us, equipping us as the believers in these days to be able to have this paradigm shift and begin to um, become relevant in this age of the green technologies. We are empowered, we are equipped, we are different people than we were before the session started. Shall then I invite you all, of course, at this time to take it to the Lord in prayer. Just thank God for all that you've spoken to us about tonight and make a commitment to become the doer of the word in as far as what the world is awaiting for, the manifestation of true sons of God in taking over, you know, the seven spheres, seven mountains of influence in our society. Everybody, let's begin to pray. 
Imadazo adiaka baza kadi, baza kado kadi, baza kada kada baza kadi, baza kada baza kada baza kada kado kada baza kada 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 kada Thank 
Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Woo, what a great start of the great conference tonight. Day number one of the many days to come. And if this is what it is in terms of the start, yeah, it is already informing us that this week will be loaded. There will be much more for us to be equipped on, be challenged on, be moved, be turned, be empowered, be enlightened to become better people, better ministers for the times at hand. Indeed, that things the Lord has intentions to do in this time. And uh, he always has and still is looking for people that are really available to be yielded vessels so that they are, <laughs> they are flexible and they are able to be used by the Lord for that which you want to do in this time. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Idarasta matosila hakastika pa. Thank you, Lord. I believe you've taken notes for reflection as well and for prayer going forward, so that you are well positioned in terms of what the Lord plan to have you used during this time in this pardon shift and during the era of this green technologies. It's time for activations, and I believe you're ready. We were told when we started by. Um, Tembela that we are going to get ready for the activations and a few instructions that he gave. One was that we need to ensure that our videos are opened and I'm going to ask you to do that right away. Um, let have, let's have all our videos to be opened though the activation will not have much to do with you as a person but uh, we are practicing what we are going to have to do throughout the week and we are here getting to the instruction that we received earlier when the program got started. So be sure that you you are open and I believe we are all in the right places uh, to ensure that there isn't any background that would serve as a disturbance to a session that is ensuing now. If you have kids, uh, make some proper arrangements to ensure that they are in the other room and you are in the other. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Father. Right. So the activation today that we are going to be taking <clears throat> will take just a minute to pray in tongues. There's enough energies already here. The atmosphere is charged, altered and conducive for every one of us to use the grace made available here and begin to activate and um, and hearken unto what the Lord would, would give you and give us based on the instruction that we're going to give out in a short while. So just a minute will be good enough. It will be good enough to hearken and ask the Lord for a word and you give out that okay. word. <clears throat> the other instruction was about muting and being unmuted. And if it's not time for speak, kindly be on mute. It's a kind of, please be on mute. Thank you. <clears throat> right. And the instruction for the activation is that we need a word from the Lord for South Africa and for Southern Africa. Ooh, just that sound. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we need a word from the Lord for SA, South Africa, and for Southern Africa. So we are all going to be taking a minute in praying in tongues. As you do so, you are, you know, hearkening to, to, to hear what the Lord will drop in your spirit. He could give you a word as in, you know, you hear the spirit speaking to you. Thoughts could uh, come to you and which when you connect, you know, that, that could be what constitute what the Lord is giving you as the word for South Africa or for Southern Africa. There could be a mental picture that you could see you know, you could peep into the spirit and begin to see a picture and in your mind that would be something the Lord is trying to describe for you to craft a word for South Africa and or Southern 
Africa. Thank you, Father. Open the mics. We take a minute, and that minute starts now. After which, those who shall have received the word will simply on the platform raise your hands. Anamazata. Kazata. Namazi Kizaka. Rada Kazaka. 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 And <laughs> Oh, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. 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 that word Amen. and have it ready Amen. to Amen. share with us. After that word, it helps to even put it down so that you're able to just read it. It makes life more easier. You may want to take a minute and do that. And as soon as you are done, or those that are ready, simply lift your hand. So we give you an audience to hear a word from the Lord about South Africa and about Sovereign Africa. Anybody ready? Right, there is one, um, Mr. Tsepang Maseko. Just before I let you in, let's give it a few seconds and I would love to have others raising their hands as well. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Keep those hands coming. Wonderful. So, so, so we have only one hand so far, and that is Mr. Spamaseko's hand. Second hand just went up, uh, Unati Liza. Allow me to drop the titles because I will err. I may not know who's Mr., who's Mrs., who is all that. I apologize. Uh, allow me with respect that um, I just call the name as is, and that's not to be disrespectful. Okay, so we will start off with uh, Spamaseko, followed by Unati Liza. Thank you so much, Mkuli. I see the aim was not to, to repeat, but I feel that the Lord, there's a scripture, you know, as we have prayed now, which uh, the Lord has laid in my heart, perhaps as a, as a, as a national uh, prophetic message to be declared to South Africa, perhaps even South, Southern Africa. It's the book of Isaiah chapter number 60, 
verse 1 to verse 5, as a prophetic declaration over South Africa and Southern Africa. It reads as follows. It says, the glorified Zion, it says, Arise from the spiritual depression to a new life. Shine, be radiant with glory and brilliance of the Lord, for your light has come, and the glory and the brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. For in fact, darkness will cover the earth and keep and deep, and darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, South Africa and Southern Africa, and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Nations will come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Verse 4, lift up your eyes around you and see they all gather together, they come to you. Your sons will come from, from far away and your daughters will be linked after at their side. Then you will see the, you will see and be radiant and your heart will tremble with joy and rejoice because the abundant wealth of the seas will be brought to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. The good Lord bless you. Thank you for this. Yo, thank you so much for that one. And, and I'm troubled here because I received that same word um, as that chapter 60 verse number one. And earlier while I was waiting for people, I was trying to put down what I believe. I heard a lot saying that needs to be released over South Africa. For SA to arise and shine for its time has come. Thank you so, so much for that. I can only but confirm it lest I do a repetition of the very word that you just released. Um, it was dropped in my spirit too for, for South Africa. And I believe that we need to really reinforce that also in our prayers going forward. Let's keep hearing many others. I had called out the second person already. Uh, before I call the second round, can I go back to that first one I had called after the bag? Uh, Unatimiza, yes, Unatimiza. You are on mute. Greetings to all the saints. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Uh, I, I believe uh, the Lord has um, given me a word through a, a picture. Uh, I see a picture of a, a forest. And now from this forest, I see a, a, the, the, the harvesting of, of the trees from the forest to, to the home, if I can put it that way. And as, as, as we carried on praying, uh, the Lord, I, I believe in my spirit that the Lord is saying um, in South Africa, uh, the harvest is ready. Uh, the harvest is ready. Uh, the harvesters need to, to go and pick up the harvest and bring it home. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Unati uh, Miza. The harvest is ready. And the harvesters need to get ready. Right. Let's take this order. Nontlantla and uh, Tabisa Siguela. I hope I pronounce it well. Nontlantla and then Tabisa Siguela. Amen. Um, I'm having a mental. Amen. Can you hear me, Pastor Kai? Very well, very well. And I'm having a mental picture of a great revival that has touched our grounds. It comes in a form of a shadow. All our feet have touched the shadow. And I hear the word of God say to me, before something appears, the shadow appears first. So we are at the brink of the great revival. Let us embrace it and continue possessing the mountains. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Mm. The shadow is an announcer of what's coming. <laughs> glory, glory. Tabisa. Thank you, Fundisi. Um, greetings to the saints in the name of Jesus. Um, I have a word. I, I sense the Lord giving me a word reading from Isaiah 62 from verse 6. I think 6, six to 7. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem, who shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes South Africa a praise in the earth. I sense the Lord, the Holy Spirit, saying in my heart that uh, men and women have been raised. A time has come for the sons and the daughters of God uh, revealed. He has raised men and women who are going to be wailing, wailing day and night 
for South Africa, our beloved country. And it goes on to say, my spirit, if you, you sense as an MSG member or a child of God in the body of Christ, when you sense the Holy Spirit speak to you about praying for our country and taking a few days, even long day, long periods of fasting, uh, heed that word, heed that, um, that word that has been placed in your heart. It is the time and the time has come for the sons and the daughters of the Most High God to wail for our country. We are in deep trouble. We need the wailers, those who are going to cry out to the Lord. Watch the city gates of South Africa. Uh, that time has come. That has been laid in my heart. And God bless you all. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for that, uh, Mem Tabisa Siguela. Yo, heed, heed, heed. If the Lord has been dealing with you, just heed. Whalers must come to take their posts and begin to wail. Thank you, Lord. Refilwe Mushomi and then Tola Kela Mazibuko. Yo. Refilwe, you are on mute and you are upside down. Can you down yourself up if English allows me to say that? Wonderful. You are still upside down. Can you down? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. Amen. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. As, as we were praying, I saw a marathon. I in this marathon race, um, it was different, young and old. And I I then heard a word saying, pass on the baton. I then saw a, a human being who was standing, but his spirit was heading towards the grave. I then saw one of us snatching the spirit person. And I heard a word that right, they are in need of you. Pass on the baton. Pass on the baton. Amen. Amen. Pass on the baton. Thank you, Father. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I believe I heard the voice of the Lord saying, my people are dying because of the lack of knowledge. And it says to me, we need to move out of the four walls of the church to the people, to the community, to towns and cities to present Jesus to them. Now is high time that the way we are used to you to do things, there should be a shift moving out of the four walls of the church and to the people because God's people are dying because of the lack of knowledge. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mem Tola Kele. <laughs> yeah, we need to break those walls of the church buildings where we have confined ourselves and get to where the people are. Hmm. I believe you've been writing this and taking this note uh, in terms of the word of the Lord for South Africa and South Africa and that as we have hearkened unto this, the Lord's word over SA and Southern Africa, we don't just end here. We are going to pray through that, but we are going to somehow take this and make, make it the point that it features in our own private and personal prayer orders to labor, to labor on, 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 on this that the Lord has been lavishing upon, upon, upon our souls. Uh, because um, some of this are the beginning of projects. Some things have been confirmed to many people that are here about what the Lord has been talking to them about. So at this time, I invite all of us to begin to pray and receive these words received or released rather, and uh, also make a commitment that we will do our part going forward in praying through until that which the Lord has spoken about as a in Southern Africa become established. Open our mouths, please, and let's begin to pray. <laughs> 
Imadusa de Masakada, Nurada Zekataka, Kata, Imazikata, Rada Zekataka, Rada Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I do not know if Tembela is back, otherwise, Seji will assist. Um, I believe we have come to the close of our day one, but allow me to really re emphasize one of the words that came out here about whalers for mm. essay. Thanks, Seji. About whalers for South Africa. Amen. I really believe that there is a grace that the Holy Ghost has lavished upon some members of the body of Christ in SA for praying for SA and for Southern Africa and even for Africa. Because indeed the revival that is about to start it will start in SA and go all the way up into Africa and begin to invade the globe. We need to take this very serious. If indeed the Lord has been staring you up towards prayer for SA. In fact, Sergi shared one of the encouragements in one of our groups a couple of weeks, if not days ago, about how insufficient prayer 
for South Africa has been when there is a need for more prayer for South Africa. May the Lord find me, may the Lord find you to stand in the gap and pick up on the grace already released to offer prayers for SA. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. 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 Now, 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 now we are closing. Um, we shall meet again tomorrow, same time, same place. The <laughs> conference is for everybody. So invite your fellows, invite your friends, invite your, your everybody. Let them also connect and attend, whether they're MSG members or not. Invite them as many as you possibly can. Let's, um, if there's a challenge of uh, load shedding, we know that you are scheduled for load shedding. Uh, may the Lord grace you to be able to load enough mobile data or meet up in groups, go to a place where you know that there isn't any issue of load shedding so that you are able to have, you know, uh, this conference running with you present there. Get your family around, get a group of people around, connect your Plasma TV there, put up the projector there, put up something. Let there be something that we all enjoy in groups, in families, so that uh, we are connected here and we are equipped, empowered, and we are made to be ministers and relevant for this time in which we live. Otherwise, we shall meet then tomorrow. Can we exit with praying in tongues? And we will have a minute just to blast into tongues. After a minute, we shall close. Or once you are done, you can just exit with me tomorrow. That's how we exit today. And God bless you. Shalom, shalom. shalom.